Hi, and welcome to the VR Gaming Podcast, a podcast and commentary about VR gaming, VR news, VR hardware, and VR reviews. I'm your host, Nick Lane. It is Friday, November 1st, and this is supposed to be the October uh, podcast, but I missed it by a day. Sorry about that. Life happens. But we're in the groove of the monthly podcast, and man, what a month, what a year it's been. Plenty to talk about. Uh, In this episode, in addition to going over the news and what happened and what we have to look forward to, I'm going to be doing reviews of two games, uh, those games being Reiko's Fragments and Cobalt Chapter 1. Now, I picked those games because those are two horror games, and uh, being that this is the October podcast and we've got Halloween that just happened yesterday, uh, might as well do some horror games, right? Makes sense. All right. Let's kick it off with the news. So I think the biggest news story for October is the launch of Asgard's Wrath for the Oculus Rift. And uh, I was going to review that game in the October podcast. However, a couple things happened. Number one, it's a game that is, I don't know, 30 plus hours by most people's estimation. And uh, I'd like to spend a little more time with the game. Granted, Uh, I think I'm going to do it next month. I doubt I'm going to complete it and then give a review. I have an idea of what my review is already because I've had a very positive experience with the game. I'm really enjoying it. I do think it's one of the best VR games that is out. Maybe maybe the best uh, built up for from the ground VR game. But I'd like a little more time on it. Um, There's also some issues with the game. So before I get into the issues... Uh, this is the first time that I've used the program Revive because I don't have uh, Oculus Rift or Rift S. I have a Windows Mixed Reality. So for me to play an Oculus-only game, I have to use a program called Revive. And if you don't know what that is, well, you download it, and basically you can launch Revive through Steam, and now you can play Oculus games. Uh, sometimes there's issues with it. And it's not maybe the most fluid experience at times. Um, That was the case when I first uh, got and downloaded Asgard's Wrath, which is like the day after it came out. Uh, But thankfully, the person or persons who is creating Revive, uh, they did an awesome job of updating it and have been updating it. So I did get the game to run, which which is great. You know, it wasn't hard to use the program. You basically download it. You download uh, uh, the Oculus Store, you download the game, and you're pretty much good to go, uh, pretty much. I think there's a caveat, right? Because uh, each game could have some issues that you might have to, to work through. But, uh, man, I'm happy that this program exists because I, I, I don't want to buy an Oculus Rift S, uh, not because of anything that I have against uh, Facebook or, or anything like that, but just because I don't think it's a great headset uh, compared to where we should be at in 2019. Um, you know, I've, I've got the Samsung Odyssey from uh, the fall of 2017, and there's things on that headset that are just better than the uh, Oculus Rift S. For example, the Fove, which is important to me. Uh, the uh, refresh rate, which is important to me. The uh, built-in uh, speakers on the Odyssey, significantly better than the Rift S. So, you know, the, the tracking is obviously better in Rift S, but... My point is that I didn't want to go out and buy a Rift S just to play this game. So thank you, thank you, thank you for the fine folks who do Revive. It's free. It's awesome of them. And uh, it makes VR so much better when we're not put a gun to our head where we have to buy an Oculus headset if we want to play some of the best games in VR. And, you know, Oculus has invested a lot of money into... Uh, these VR companies to create these good games, especially a game like Asgard's Wrath, which took three years to make and is a triple A title game, the game that is 30 plus hours. Uh, that's great. And I hope Oculus reaps uh, benefits of their investment. And certainly they will because you have to go through uh, their store. I mean, I still had to buy it through the Oculus store. So, so they got my money, right? Um, I think the developers are going to do quite well with this game. I'm very excited for it, and I'm looking forward to playing through more of it. So what are the issues that I mentioned? Well, 
some of the issues that have sprung up that I've had a problem with and, and other people have had a problem with, and it's not just people who are using Revive, by the way. These are people playing on the, on the Rift system, is that there's some stuttering in the game. What's odd is that it's not happening to everybody. It's happening to enough people where it's not like, you know, this isolated issue, but it's not happening to everybody. Typically, when I would experience stuttering in the game is when an enemy would spawn in or enemies would spawn in, and there's like a, a stutter when that happens, or during combat, the enemies and, and there's some of their animations would stutter, which completely ruined the immersion um, of the game. But also, I, w- I got to like a labyrinth with the second character, and the stutter was so bad that I had to stop playing the game. The game became unplayable. I would just die in combat because the game would pretty much freeze and then I'd be dead. All right, so it was it was it was a big problem. It's worth saying that I'm playing on a 2080. All right, I've got a I've got a, a really good card. I'm on a 2080. My CPU is an 8086K. I'm playing on a, a one terabyte SSD drive that I just bought just for this game, uh, and 16 gigs of RAM. So. I've got a beefy system. I just built it last year, and it's only used for VR gaming. Uh, and kind of going through the the forums and, and Discord, a lot of the people having problems are actually the people with the better cards. I'm seeing people with 2080 Ti's have a problem, or the 1080 Ti. People on lower cards seem to be fine. So I, I don't know what's going on. Thankfully, uh, after getting onto their Discord, there's some there's some uh, folks on there who have. Uh, crafted an INI file that I was able to download and switch it out with the INI file in the game, and it reduces things. I think like shadows are a big issue, especially with Revive. And again, this is not just a Revive problem, but it just changes the graphics enough. So I was able to get the game looking good, playing on medium. Um, and by the way, medium is not that much different than ultra. I think there's like shadows and stuff involved. Uh, but I was able to get the game playing on medium with that I and I file. Just go look at it. It's pinned on their Discord. If you're having the same problem that I am, just go to um, the company, uh, Sanzu. I'm sorry if I don't know the name off, offhand. Just go to their Discord, and you'll find that file pinned. But through that I and I file, I got it working. And I, there's also another setting that you can make in the I and I file that uh, will take away the the temporal anti-aliasing. I always get that wrong. and sorry if I butchered it. Uh, it removes that because the aliasing in that game is just, oh God, it blurs the hell out of the game. It's ugly. It's terrible. When I put the I and I file in there and then I also added the line about the anti-aliasing, man, that game not only looks great, but it's running great. So I think I'm at a good spot. I think I'm at a place where the game is, is very playable and it's very beautiful. But that took me some time and it took me some digging and experimentation, which again is why I didn't want to review the game now because um, the settings in the game, the graphical settings in the game are pretty poor in terms of the options that it gives you. It's like you can set low, medium, high, ultra, epic, something like that, right? And there's like a resolution slider, but that's it. And the resolution slider, you don't even know if it's like 100%. It's just way too limited. My understanding is that Uh, There's a patch coming out probably next week that's going to address some bugs. And then patch two is going to give users options of turning things off like shadows, maybe draw distance, things like that. So that's going to make this game better and put it where where it needs to be at. If you're having problems, don't despair. It sounds like it's going to get to where it needs to go. But um, that's one of the, the main reasons that I'm holding off from reviewing it at this point in time. All right, well, another big launch happened. You can call it, I guess, a big launch, which is Borderlands 2 came out last week. And uh, many people have been anticipating this game. Not me so much because of the co-op being uh, taken out of the game for the VR version, uh, which we talked about in the last podcast. But uh, it's selling for 50 bucks. So this is a game that came out in, what, 2011, 2012. It's coming out. Being sold for fifty bucks, which is it's a crazy price. But I mean, first of all, this is this is ten dollars more than Asgard's Wrath, all right, which is a a game that is built in it came out in twenty nineteen, and it's built from the VR uh, from the ground up as a fantastic game. So we're selling a game that's seven eight years old, fifty dollars, and you took out the uh, one of the best things about the game and sort of why the game exists, which is co op. Uh, to make matters worse, there were a lot of problems initially at launch. 
namely that people with the Vive uh, just wouldn't play well for them. I think there's some depth issues and, and other things. To be honest with you guys, I didn't dig in this too much. I just saw the problems because I had no interest in this game. I, I, I kind of, you know, I, I hate to say it. It's almost like don't make the game if you're not going to make the game uh, uh, the way it was intended to be played, which is co-op. So uh, people who like single players and don't care about co-op, they're going to disagree with me. And I get it, guys. I'm glad that you have this game to play. It sounded like the people with the Rift, they didn't have the issues that the people with the Vive or Index had. So um, I guess it's been patched. I guess it's been fixed. But this is a, a hard pass for me at this time, especially especially when you have a game like Asgard's Wrath that launched this month, which everybody should be playing. Then you got Stormlands next month. Then you got Pistol Whip coming up. Um November 7th. I mean, Borderlands, man, you, you got to either bring it or, or or don't exist at all. Or come out for like 20 bucks, Or be a free upgrade for Borderlands 2 owners like uh, No Man's Sky was. Something, something work with us, man. Do something. I'm so happy that uh, companies are re-releasing games into VR, but you got to do it right. You got to do something. You got to price it right. You got to do it right. You can't neuter it. You can't neuter it and then charge 50 bucks for it because the community is going to turn their their back on it. You know, this worked a little more maybe two years ago, like when uh, Skyrim came out and Fallout came out and there still wasn't that much content. But now we and, and they did a fairly good job with their releases. I, granted, Fallout had issues, but Skyrim was a really good release, all things considered. Um You know, and I got it and I enjoyed it. But now in 2019, Borderlands, no co-op problems with launch in vr it's just it, it reeks of being half-assed you gotta go full-assed all right let's move on so this is some some good news right it's the uh steam halloween sale which is going on until november 7th which is uh thursday i picked up a lot like almost every game you can want in vr is on sale it's fantastic i love their holiday sales uh i picked up the game the invisible hours i think it was like 10 bucks I've always been curious about that game, but certainly didn't want to spend the 20 or 30 bucks that uh, it normally goes for. And I've heard good things about the game, The Morrigan, uh, which is an early access, and I picked that up as well. I think that was like something like 10 bucks. So uh, whenever I get time, whenever I can take a break from Asgard's Wrath, I'll, I'll play those games. I've, I, my games are piling up right now. I also picked up uh, this game called Audio Trip, which I was debating reviewing in this podcast, but I didn't want this to get super long this time. Uh, but that's a game that the audio trips, a game like, uh, beat saber, but with, uh, licensed artists that you're more likely to know if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes the music any better because I think beat saber had pretty good music, but, uh, audio trips out. So check that out. I think it's pretty good. I'll probably do a, a legit review at some point in time, but worth mentioning. Uh, and, and just to add to that, I guess synth writers, another, a game that's Beat Saber-esque came out of Early Access and it released, uh, came out of Early Access on Steam and it also came out for Quest. So, man, you're seeing all the Beat Saber clones. It makes sense. Uh, they're, they're fun. It sells well. And maybe we'll see improvements on, on the Beat Saber formula because Beat Saber's fine. I own it, but it's not one of my favorite games. You know, it, does, it doesn't do it for me like a game like Asgard's Wrath, um, which is more my style, right? There's, there's just more to it. It's a little, little more depth to the game. All right. Also this month, man, th- there's so much going on. Also this month, and what a hell of a year we've been having, Vive Cosmos launched. Now, the Vive Cosmos, we talked about that a bit last podcast in terms of uh, the specs and stuff, so I'm not going to get into that. But, uh, yeah, you want to talk about botched launches? Um, look at the Vive Cosmos. Uh, just out of the box, the tracking was just broken. It basically wouldn't work in areas where the lighting wasn't just perfect. And even when it did work, it was not up to snuff to the um, tracking of things like the uh, the Rift S, which has sort of set the, uh, the gold standard now in terms of um, inside-out tracking. So you got, a, you got a headset here that's $300 more than the Rift S with worse tracking, problems out of the box, I, I, I don't know. It, everything about this game, uh, everything about this uh, headset just seems like they just did this half-heartedly with their marketing and the spinning platter that they showed months before. And I, I, I don't know what HTC is doing, but they're not doing it right. And this is just going to die. You've got 
The Rift S for $399, which works great, got great tracking, which is on the lower end headsets, affordable. Or if you're going to spend a lot more than that, you're going to get the Valve Index, which is better than the uh, Cosmos. So the Cosmos kind of fits in the middle at $699, but it's not going to win people over with problems like that. Uh, I do believe that they, they're working to address them and have made improvements since it first launched, but uh, there's nothing like a first impression. And th that headset really needed to make a good first impression and differentiate itself in the market in some way, shape, or form. And it just, uh, from everything I've seen or read, no, no interest in this headset, unfortunately. So my money's safe. I'm sticking with my Samsung OG, the original Odyssey. Uh, for at least some more time, yeah, at least some more time. Uh, well, here's one thing in the news that maybe would influence the purchase of an index. And we got a bit of news uh, this month about Half-Life VR. Uh, it sounds, according to the Valve News Network, you could check them out on YouTube, uh, tracking all things Valve, that uh, according to them, we're going to see a trailer of Half-Life VR sometime before the end of the year, which is good and bad because we heard that uh, the, the rumor has been, or maybe Valve even stated that we're going to get a VR game from them sometime before the end of the year. According to the Valve News Network, it's only a trailer, and then the game will be launching in early 2020. Uh, but it's Half-Life, at least they, according to them, and that's something to be excited about. Like I said before, I remember... Uh, staying home from work, I think it was 2004 when I when Half Life came out, uh, Half Life 2, and I built a brand new computer at the time just for that. So um, I'm I'm a Half Life fan, and I'd love to play that game in VR. Apparently, according to the Valve News Network, which they had a lot of meaty info, so I wanted to send you guys over to that video. Go go check out their YouTube page and watch the video. It's probably like, I don't know 12 to 16 minutes, something like that. Um, yeah, it's in that range. Anyway, speaking of 12 to 16, that's roughly how many uh, hours of gameplay that they're saying is in this game. It's going to be a prequel to Half-Life 2, so we're going to see uh, recognizable characters. Uh, and as the video states, it, the nice thing is about being a, a prequel, it's not going to be Half-Life 3, which will upset some people that, you know, Half-Life 3 being a VR-only game, that might drive some people nuts. But, but when you make it a prequel, uh, you're going to at least kind of keep some of those criticisms those problems at bay so uh smart on valve that makes sense i'm happy to play a prequel it sounds good i'm happy to have a game that's 12 or 16 hours that's a, a good amount of time for a first person shooter uh they were saying also in the video that was going to be originally teleport only and the levels were designed for that so i guess there's like a lot of cover elements in the game that you use because it was teleport only uh but now they are incorporating things like smooth locomotion into it so there's probably some tweaks that they need to make, which again makes sense. If look, if they were making this game years ago and they were stick and, and teleport only was a thing at the time, well, now VR has moved to you know most people want smooth locomotion. I mean that that seems to be the standard. Sure, you can have teleport in there, but you don't want to release a game like this that's teleport only because it will drive people crazy. Um, yeah, and and there like I said, there's more there's more bits of news in that I don't want to spoil it all I think it's a good video I think you're going to enjoy it it sounds like Valve has really gone all out and this is the kind of game that based on the video what was described in there just could even surpass a game like Asgard's Wrath by by quite a bit in, in terms of being impressive so I'm excited it's an instant purchase it's the kind of thing that would have me looking taking a, a good hard look at purchasing a uh, Valve Index because right now I have a trouble justifying that. But that's Half-Life VR. Hopefully we see that in the next six months. Hopefully we see it in early 2020 or at least a trailer by the end of the year. I hope they're right. All right, last but not least in news, we have uh, the release coming up on November 7th of the game Pistol Whip. Pistol Whip is a game from Cloudhead Games. They're known for, uh, uh, for the, the games The Gallery, I never played that, but uh, they've been kind of crit critically acclaimed sort of early VR games that came out. Uh, this is a first-person rhythm shooter. So people have been comparing this to, like, uh, imagine Beat Saber and Super Hot had a baby. Well, this is it. And it also has that John Wick vibe to it. Even in the, the trailer, they have somebody dressed up sort of John Wick-esque. 
Uh, streamers have been doing that as well. Uh, it looks amazing. Imagine just having an awesome soundtrack with the stylized art as you shoot kind of these silhouette guys um, in, in the vein of super hot. Uh, looks really fun, really great. People have been saying it's a good workout. It's That's checking all the boxes for me. I'm way more excited for kind of the genre packaged in this kind of style versus a game like Beat Saber. So uh, that's going to be instant purchase for me. And that's coming up in less than a week from now on Thursday, November 7th. I think it's going to be a really big hit for Cloud Hen Games and VR. And it's coming out also uh, not only on PC VR, but the, uh, the Quest. So everybody can enjoy that. That's good news. All right, that's going to do it for the news. I don't have any awesome transition sound effects or anything like that. So we're going to get right into uh, review time. Again, we're going to review Reiko's Fragments and Cobalt Chapter 1 in honor of uh, the spooky month of October and Halloween. So let's start off with Reiko's Fragments. Uh, this is a game that is in early access. It came out in October 28th. Uh, this year, so just a couple days ago, and it's selling for $14.99. Uh, the publisher designer is Pixel Canvas Studios, and it is for PC VR. You can get it on Steam. Sorry, Quest owners. Maybe we'll come to Quest. Uh, I hope it does, because uh, the more people that experience this game, the better. All right, review time. Let's go over things one by one. What is the overview of this game? What are the What is the objective of this game? So, this is a haunted house style game uh, where you are in a, in a, in a haunted house kind of setting and you're trying to find, uh, th there's like these dolls that are scattered throughout the house and it's randomized and the dolls are holding, uh, I don't know if it's a fragment, but it's like a, a key, if you will. And you got to grab this key and then you got to get to the room in the house that will take you through a portal and you escape it. Uh, the catch is that there is a ghost in this house and she can't see you, but she can hear you. So when you move, she is drawn towards you. So you got to try to uh, avoid her and escape. Uh, the games are very quick. The house is not huge. So games could be a few minutes, maybe, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes at the most. It depends on how it drags out, but uh, kind of a quick hit game. Uh, this is, uh, by definition, a party game. Not only that, uh, this is a VR versus the crowd game. And what that means is you've got one player in VR and then up to eight other people can kind of mess with you. <laughs> well, to put a, yeah, mess with you while you're in, in VR. And they can do that by uh, going to RacoVR.com, which is the website. And there's like a room access code and uh, they type that in sort of just like if you've ever played the Jackbox games, same kind of idea type in the, the room access code and up to eight people can log in and before the game starts they set traps which is essentially picking you know fake dolls in the house right uh, they set traps and then when the game starts they there's kind of like a I don't know if energy bar that fills up for them on the screen and it, uh, their screen will also show like what room you are in the house they have like a map of the house and that energy bar fills up and they can trigger events in there so um, when it fills up, they can make like a uh, a door slam or a whoosh noise. Um, there's there's one more thing that I, it's kind of escaping me right now, but they have three options. And according to the developer, there's they're working on more things. So right now, what's in there is pretty good. It's really fun. But but this game is not it's not a single player game. It's not a game you play by yourself. You're not going to have that much fun if you play by yourself. This is a game that you bring out at parties. This is a game that you bring out the holidays. This is a game that you throw grandma in there if you want to, you know, get your inheritance money really quickly. All right. It's, it's a, it's a lot of fun. You know, there's going to be a lot of screaming for the VR player in fright and a lot of laughter from your supposed friends who are trying to scare the crap out of you. That's it. That's how this game fits in there. And I got to say, I love the idea of VR versus the crowd. I played this game on a on a stream through uh, our Buffalo Pinball Twitch channel, and then I uh, uploaded it on our Buffalo Pinball YouTube channel, so you guys can go check it out and, and see a 39 year old man screaming for his life. Uh, who doesn't want to see that, right? Uh, except for me. Uh, yeah, you can go watch that, and I can tell you right now, our viewers loved it, who were participating in it and frightening me, and it it was a fun experience. I was I was I was sweating, you know, just in fright. It's it's very it's very frightening, very chilling. 
I, I got to say, I've probably played this game for two hours um, in two streaming sessions. And I know, I, I sort of know all the tricks now. I, I know what to expect, but it, it's still frightening. It's still random enough that's entertaining. Again, I think the ideal way to play this game is that you want to have uh, a party, you want to have people over, and you want to rotate people in and out the headset. You know, maybe have them play three games at once, rotate somebody else in. You can even do like a scoring method. Like what I was doing with the uh, the live chat is I would say, okay, I won that one. I found the key and I won. So, you know, Nick won, chat zero, right? Or if, if the ghost would get me, then the chat won. So it became this kind of fun, casual competition we were having. All right. Anyways, let's go to graphics. The graphics in this game are are, are very well done. This is not, it doesn't look like some indie rendered house. The house is, has a lot of detail to it. There's paintings, there's there's furniture, there's objects in the house. Um, it's got a, enough of a this creepy vibe to it, kind of this old kind of Japanese, um, I don't want to say mansion, it's not huge, but um, the, the graphics are high quality. I think it's using the Unreal Engine if I had to guess, but very well done. I can't knock the graphics at all. I think it's ex- executed quite well. Um, playing on the Samsung Odyssey, the, the blacks look great because that's an OLED display. So, uh, you know, there's times where, oh, that's what the chat could do. The chat can shut the lights off. So when the lights go out and it's kind of, it's nearly pitch black, that's frightening as well. Um, just really good. And let's move into the sound. The sound on this game is phenomenal. Uh, as any good horror game needs to have good sound, just kind of the, uh, the creaking of the house when, uh, when a door slams, when the chat can like slam a door, it will scare the crap out of you. When that ghost is getting closer to her, there's just like this moaning sound and there's like, this music that accompanies her. It is fright inducing and it's done so well. There's kind of moments of quiet and then the chat might create a whoosh or knock plates off a table, things like that. Terrifying, terrifying, absolutely perfect. I love sound in horror games because of the amount of thought that goes into them. If most games could take the level of thought that are put into good horror games like this, they'd be so much better. It just goes to show how important sound is in a game, and I think it nails it. Immersion is great as well. Um, It has free locomotion. That's how you move. Here's the thing, and this is what I like a lot of horror games do. You cannot run, and your character moves really slowly, which sort of is a function of just making this game workable, right? Like, if you could run through the house, it wouldn't be fun. So, obviously, they have you almost crawling at a snail's pace. That's It is what it is, and I think that's fine. Um, you can pick up objects in the house, and when the ghost comes, you kind of throw the object, and again, because the ghost can't see you, it's attracted to sound, the ghost will, like, whoosh towards that object, um, so it's nice. It's, it's like you pick things up in your hand, rotate, look at it, whatever, throw it and walk around smooth locomotion. It, it, it works. Level immersion's good. And again, check out the video on Buffalo pinball YouTube and just watch the amount of times I, I scream in fright or, or break out to a sweat because I'm in fear. That's good immersion. That is, that is nailing immersion. All right, let's talk about last ability right now. This game is in early access and there's only one location. This is where the game is limited and hurt a little bit in what I'm going to give it as a rating. Uh, it needs more locations, and there is one more planned. There, well, there's more than one more planned, but you can even see a preview for the next map. It's I think it's called uh, the Shinto or something like that. There's a there's a video I saw on their Discord channel of it. Looks great. It's like a kind of like an outdoor um, setting. The developer has plans for uh, locations beyond that. So hopefully this game does well, and hopefully we do see more locations. I'd love to see like 10 locations. I'd love to see a lot because this is what's going to contribute to the last ability is just having more places to play in. Um, that house is is getting a little old for me right now. Uh, like I said, I spent two hours. I, I'm happy to do it again. And again, this game sort of succeeds when you have a lot of people and you're rotating your friends in there. Um, so you're going to get a lot of last ability out of it, especially when you have parties. But um I'd like to obviously see more locations. That's going to make this game stick around for years. Uh, more things that the chat can do. I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's limited. They can certainly do do a decent amount without you know making the game uh, broken or unbalanced. But you know, giving the chat more to do. Again, it's in early access. The developers indicated that he has got more planned for it. So I'm really excited. Uh, I'll be doing more streaming of this as more content becomes available. 
So out of my uh, zero to 10 system, let's just review what things mean. So a zero to two is don't wish this game on your worst enemy. A three to five is we all make mistakes. A six to eight is a solid game. And a nine to 10 is buy it. So I, listen, I, I, have, to, I have to give this game a 7.5, which is a solid game. Uh, again, it, it's an early access, but it's limited. So for $15, there's only that one house. All right. And you're going to be playing this game when you have friends to play with, or if you're a streamer and you're doing it on your stream and your chat's playing it, you're not going to play this game by yourself. It's, that's fine. That you don't. That doesn't hurt the rating per se. Uh, it just needs. It just needs some more content. It needs some more. This game could easily go to a a, a nine or higher. Easily, I think I'd, I'd say buy it if you if you're looking for a good party horror game. I say buy it. But to try to just break it down and put it all together because there needs to be more seven and a half. Uh, but the game is is better than that, than that numerical rating, if that makes sense. All right, that was Reiko's Fragments. Let's move on to our, our second and last review of the show, and that's Kobold Chapter 1. So it's K-O-L-B-O-L-D, Chapter 1. This game is, uh, it's so it's not an early access. Like It's the official release. It came out in November 14th, 2018, and it's $9.99, and this is a... Uh, first-person horror game in VR. All right, and then uh, just taking a break to look this up. It's made by developer and publisher Another World GmbH. So there you go. Okay, so what is the objective? What's the overview of this game? You are, I don't know if you're a YouTube personality or, or, or what's going on. You get a YouTube channel, but you're somebody going to investigate this creepy house that is in the middle of the forest in Germany. Um, I think it's like, I think it's not even present day. It might be like the, I don't know, 70s or 80s, something like that. Can't remember. And that, well, that wouldn't make sense. I think the, I think the, um, the bad things happen in that house. And then I think this is, this is, this is present day because when the game starts off, you, uh, kind of, there's a computer and you kind of watch like a YouTube video on it. So yeah. Okay. I messed that up. Uh, it's present day, but the family in the house is from like the uh, 70s or 80s. Uh, so you're exploring a haunted house, right? Middle of woods, Germany. That's a good setting for a uh, creepy haunted house horror game. Got it. Like it. Great. Let's move on. The graphics in the game. The graphics in the game is not as good as Reiko's. Um, it's a, it's a li- it's not bad. It's don't don't not get me wrong. It's not bad. Um, I think we're it doesn't look as great as there's some outdoor scenes both in the beginning and the end of the game but the indoor scenes are 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 better um nothing nothing crazy but it gets the job done looks looks good enough so not much more to be said of that sound in this game sound in the game's not bad at all it's got your 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 creaking it's got the doors that will creak shut and uh the sounds the sounds fine there's um some voice acting in the game because there's some tapes that you listen to and that's well done. Um, one thing that I like that this game does is that in the beginning of the game, you, you, uh, kind of can start your laptop and it will play like a YouTube video and seeing like a video in VR, uh, is, is pretty immersive. I I thought that was a nice touch. So like the game gave sort of a good first impression and the graphics and sound, uh, combined to produce the immersion is a, a spooky setting. I mean, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a horror experience. This place, this house is creepy. Uh, there was, mm, I think, one jump scare. I'm, I'm trying not to spill too much in this game, so I'm going to be careful. Uh, it, it, it does more of a job of just kind of setting like something's going to happen. Just more of a job keeping you on the edge rather than throwing things at you. And I, I tend to like those games more than anything. I mean, think Dread Halls. I, I like that. If you're throwing things at you constantly, you can kind of become fatigued by it or get used to it, or, or it could even be too much, right? So this game sort of just builds up on atmosphere. Um, the controls were smooth locomotion. That At least that's what I use. I don't know if there's uh, other options out there, but it, it worked fine. Here's the, here's the weird thing and what... I didn't really get or I don't really like about the game. First of all, this game has like an inventory system. All right. Like you could see like this kind of, it's not a backpack. It's not a fanny pack, but it's like, if you combine the two, it's like in front of you where you can pick things up and there weren't a lot of things to pick up, but you can actually put it in there. So 
that's great and all. Uh, fine, there's inventory. I'm thinking I'm going to be solving puzzles, putting things together. The problem is that this the first chapter ended, and I never needed to use the inventory system. Not once. Unless I missed something. I mean, I got to the end of it. Uh, it was never used. Really weird. And let me kind of wrap this. Let me kind of wrap this up. This game did a good job of building the tension, kind of setting the 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 the, the table for the story. But then the end of it, the end of this chapter is just so. I, I don't know. It wasn't that scary. It was kind of weird, but it was just a huge letdown. At least for me, this is uh, maybe some people differ here, differ here, but like. I think the the tension that it was built up uh, and what happened at the end was a huge letdown. And I don't think it's just because it ended. It's not because it ended abruptly per se and then that's the end of chapter one. I just don't want to go back in that world. I, I can care less about it now that I've kind of seen what they have to show. Uh, and to me, I've got to wonder, the fact that they have this inventory system that you don't use whatsoever and this sort of letdown at the end, even though the, it starts, the game starts off great, leads me to think that they had something planned for this, okay? They had something much grander planned for it or a bigger game planned for it, and they either ran out of time or budget or something happened, and they just sort of, like, ended it because the quality and what it builds up to just doesn't match that much. At least, listen, my opinion on this, some people might love it. It just didn't do it for me. Uh, I, I played this game during a live stream, and... The chat was like, that's it? That's what happened? They were let down too. So it wasn't just me uh, who, who felt that way. So I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I feel like this could have been so much better. Um, it does nothing to make me want to play a Chapter 2 if a Chapter 2 is even happening. This game has been out for almost a year now, and we don't. Uh, chapter 2 is not out, so who knows if it's going to happen. So uh, I guess at the end of the, at the, end of the day, uh, this game gets gets a five and that might be pretty generous to be honest uh five falls in a solid game i'm sorry we all make mistakes is that the high end of we all make mistakes right uh i think that they really had something i think that the bulk of the game like the 90 percent of the game there was something there and that just kind of crumbled at the end and uh it's a good idea that just wasn't really fleshed out wasn't really finished and unfortunately, I, it's a game I can't recommend to uh, people. Save your money. I think I even got this game when it was on sale for 50%. And even it just wasn't worth my hour. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a pass for me. All right. Well, that is going to do it for this episode of the VR Gaming Podcast. Here's a, here's a little treat for you guys who made it to the end. I have a key, a Steam key to give away for Reiko's Fragments. And I'm going to make it simple. First person to email me at vrgamingpodcast at gmail.com. That's vrgamingpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, you're going to get a key from me. So if, if you email me, I don't respond. You just didn't win. That's all. Uh, pretty simple. You get a key for this game. It's a $15 game. It's a great, fun game to be playing. That's Rako's Fragments. First person to email me gets it. And if you have questions, feedback, you can reach me there as well. Uh, please consider leaving a review on iTunes. I believe you could do so on Stitcher as well. Uh, show some love. Show some support. Uh, you can also follow me. I am on Twitter. It's at Podcast VR, or you can search for VR Gaming Podcast. A uh, great way to interact. I try to provide uh, thoughtful info. I try to share things there. I'm way more active there than Facebook. I might even just delete the Facebook because I, I prefer to use Twitter for this purpose anyway. So check it out. As always, thanks for listening, and I will catch you next month. 